I ask the Star Mothers to step into the sacred circle here today, to this meeting of star seeds. Dear Shining Ones, we do step forward into this beautiful circle, this glimmering light. And we say this to you, there are Pleiadians from the past, but also from the future. You don't know what you don't know yet. And though you may not feel truly Lemurian, Pleiadian, or starseed, that's okay. We ask you to just take a breath and see if you can soften that part of you that has trouble embracing your divinity. For that is what we brought to you. It was a plan. Do you remember? Some of you were there for the beginning of that plan. Some of you came in the middle. Some, like our dear Millie Ha, came at the end. You were all there, woven together in the beautiful tapestry that was the Akashic proving ground for so many lives to come. And now you are back. We call you star seeds because we live inside of you as a point of light, just like a star, like what you see in your heavens. We are inside of you. You are our children. What we bring you here today to do is to create a more complete remembrance. And that doesn't come from thinking and pondering and wondering. It comes from opening. It's as though you are cracking open a beautiful geode and inside what sparkles. We know what these are, crystals. And they shine and you're attracted to them. Why are you so attracted to them? Because it reflects what's inside of you, your nature. And it reflects the crystalline structure of your DNA, of your planet, of your Akash. So let us talk for a moment about your Akash. This word has been around a lot today in this seminar. Has it made you feel closer to it or further from it? Has it made you feel more at peace or perhaps more impatient? to know more. A little of both would be a very good recipe. But also, please do trust us. We know each one of you so dearly as our children. You may not have come here thinking or feeling that. You may have come because it sounded interesting, or the speakers attracted you. But now that you're here, we ask you, notice this place inside of you where this star seed actually lives. We tell you it is in your heart. And we ask you, talk to it. Commune with it, touch it, feel it, let yourself open to it, crack open if you need to. There is information there for you, there is guidance there for you, and of course there is love. We would never steer you in a direction that went away from love. For truly, that is what we are here to do. That is what divinity is about. It is about the greater love. It is about the greatest love of all. 
the love of the self as source, the mirror that shows your face as the face of God or goddess, what you mirror in others and what they mirror in you as that face. And that face needs a light to be seen. And that light lives inside of you. And when you crack open that place and that magnificent light begins to sparkle and shine, At first, you might be afraid. What do I do with this light? Where do I shine it? I can't tell my family about it. You don't need to tell anyone. You only need to know inside of you what's real. Dear shining ones, this is an old, old plan from our side. We have watched your planet for what you would call millennium. We have helped prepare it to hold the consciousness of what has been here for 200,000 years, 50,000 years, 25,000 years, six months. It has always been a part of the plan that has shaken hands with your free will. Now, perhaps what is happening on the planet now does not sound like your free will. That is a good question, isn't it? You do not always know what the plan is, and can you let it unfold anyway? Can you trust us that we only move in benevolence and love. How else would we treat our children? How else would we teach our children? How else would we interact with our children? Benevolence and love. Take a breath, please. And allow a wave to wash over you front to back, back to front, a beautiful wave that comes from the heart of Lemuria, that comes from the source of your own divinity, that brings with it your remembrance, that brings the songs, the sacred circles, that brings the teaching wheels, that brings the ceremonies, that brings the men and the women to the fire. Feel it. Feel that wave of memory. And let yourself say yes, yes, yes. And take another breath. Know that you, each one, stand in the center of the hub of the wheel. You are your own wheel with your many spokes reaching out into life, reaching out to the rim that holds these parts of your lives together. And what is beyond that rim? What is beyond that rim? What is beyond that rim are the star mothers, are the entourage, are the loving beings that are your cheerleaders, your supporters, your teachers, your guides. See yourself right now standing in the hub of that wheel. And all of this love, this wash of love, this wave coming over you, being directed to you from the heart of the star mothers. Let yourself open. Receive it. Let it crack you open. Let it show you 
the light inside of you. And let that be your guiding light as you go from the center out to the spokes, to the rim and beyond. When you step up to a star mother in communion and in community and in the deepest appreciation and love going both ways. Take a breath, dear shining ones, and let yourself hold that image. As we step back now to the outside of the wheel, we step back and we say, Aloha for now. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I am so aware of the perceptions of humanity. I am so aware that those might perceive a message like this as untenable. Untenable for those who would have logic and, and consciousness that would work in four dimensions because we start talking about star mothers and yet star mothers the word the concept is going to take on some very different feelings and meanings in the next years it's going to become a word eventually that many use because as the new Lemuria begins to shape itself, remembrance is starting to occur. Remembrance carries with it a cognization of truth. That is, things remembered that you truly experienced or believed in. You didn't have to be convinced. Some things are this way. That a remembrance is, oh yes, I remember, I was there, I did this, I am that. I belong to that, that is my lineage. And other kinds of remembrances come with it a doubting. And someone has to step in and then say yes, and, and this is how it works or whatever, and it then becomes teaching. And we're not talking about that. We're not talking about convincing anyone to step into an odd, unreal experience called knowing a star mother. We're talking about a profound remembrance that is far more profound than any of you currently have. You see, the next step is truly starting to remember. And a remembrance that goes beyond anything that might be synapse or a thought or or simple memory because this remembrance is you with a star mother that you'll never forget you don't forget this dear ones if you are one who has experienced this we call a star mother it's you and what I mean by it's you, I mean that every single cell of your body resounds and vibrates, not just with remembrance, but with a, oh my, oh my. Because this is something that starts to come forward. How many of you remember your mother? especially if she's gone when you were young. How many of you remember her looking at you and smiling and holding you and perhaps singing you songs? And then when you were a little older, taking you aside perhaps and teaching a little. And I will tell you the answer is not that many. 
The idea of the mother, of course, even when you're an adult, is something that is beautiful and lovely. But the actual remembrance is fleeting, and you know that. Even the human beings in the room, you know that. It's difficult. Because childhood memories, even profound ones, are eventually covered over by the memories of you going about your business and you becoming you. But not with the star mother. First of all, you face a multi-dimensional being. Five of those who present in these two days, we have told you, direct descendant of a star mother. And the remembrance that they are starting to have is procedures, processes, consciousnesses, science. But have they started to tell you what is also occurring? Some of the assignments that I have given to the first named star seed, Yai. As I told him to start remembering the lullaby that his mother sang to him. Personal. And it wasn't long before he did. But it also comes with other things. Sometimes confusion. Sometimes profundity. Because you are then starting to again, again, step out of your re reality and start processing, if you can, what it was like to sit before your mother, who was a multidimensional being from another star system. Now, what did that mean? First of all, the mother's love, perhaps the greatest love of Earth. Perhaps nothing really surpasses that. And yet, this one does. Because a star mother is one who understands and recognizes that she and those with her have birthed a planet, a new consciousness, a change in DNA. Then in order to come and do such a thing, there had to be sacrifice. That they never get to go home. Not that they couldn't. But they wouldn't. And I have discussed this before. And I will tell you again. Why they wouldn't go home. And I hope this rings true. To how much love. Or compassion. Is possible beyond anything. That you've ever experienced. Mother let me ask you something. You have children, you're watching them grow up, and someone comes along and says, I'd like to take you someplace else, off planet. And it's beautiful, and you're going to love it, and you're going to live a long time. And you're going to look at them and say, are you crazy? I've got kids here. I want to watch them grow up. I belong with my children. Don't, don't tempt me with those other things. And that's what a mother would do. You know that, Mom. Because you are connected with your children. I just gave it to you. Those star mothers. Whether you knew them or whether you didn't. You all have their DNA. And that means you have their lineage. And there are a few of you who have their voice in your mind. And you're beginning to remember it. And that star mother isn't going home because there was a potential of this today. A new Lemuria, a change, a society of humanity, a civilization that did not destroy itself as predicted, did not go down a path as predicted, but instead started to clean itself up Difficult it is. 
And they had to stay to see that. They set up systems for you, which are just now starting to open, which will be revealed tomorrow. Systems that would accelerate that which they stayed for. Their mothers are not going to leave you. If there's such a thing as acceptable consciousness pride, they have it now. Can't you feel it? Because of what you're doing. Because of what's next. Oh, there are some who will listen to this and say, what do you mean what's next? Take a look around the world. How do you like it so far? And they haven't been listening. What's happening now, right now, on this planet, is the gyrations of lower consciousness meeting higher consciousness. It's a reboot. It's a time when it's confusing because you don't know what you don't know and you cannot look up to a higher level at the moment. So you can't see what's ahead, especially if it's higher thinking that you've ever seen. I'll say it again and again. You can't teach a sightless person what color looks like. <laughs> you barely can teach them what sight is like if they've never seen anything. How do you describe it? Much less a million shades of color. That's where you're going. Slowly. Into areas you don't know about yet. But so many look at this and they say, well, it looks like we're going down. And that is only because that's all you've ever done. And you don't recognize even the trend of maturity or a removal from the dysfunction that you have wallowed in, in consciousness for eons. And it starts to change. And the old souls, the ones who would listen to this and understand it and nod their head or come to a meeting like this are saying, yes, we feel it. It is small, but we feel it. it's coming. I'll tell you what else is coming. It's remembering that star mother. Oh, that voice. We've said this before. That voice. You know, a lot of paintings of ETs, they're really cute. <laughs> so many planets, so much life. And you're going to laugh someday when you meet them. Because they mostly look like you. <laughs> they don't have four arms and three eyes. And, <laughs> and all the things that you want to think happened. Because the ones you're going to meet are the ones who have high consciousness from the same creator made in his image is the image you're going to see. And it looks a lot like you with a high consciousness. You'll laugh someday. Oh, we painted all these pictures of all these things we thought were ETs not understanding. We're an ET to them. We look just like them. However, the subtle differences, which would be evolutionary, the subtle differences because of what might be high consciousness or even simply because of the way it developed for reasons that it needed to on planets would create different sounding voices, different looking humans, as you know. The star mother, pretty big, pretty tall. A skin which is very unusual looking. You can't see through it, but you think you can because of the material. A voice that created by a vocal cord set that had two areas where they could sing two tones at once or speak two tones at once. And it's a voice that is unique in this galaxy and you'll never forget it because that's the voice that sung some of you to sleep. Oh my, because some of you are going to hear that voice in visions, in your sleep. Appropriate it is because they're still here. In whatever form, they're still here. And they want you to hear it. Wouldn't you want your child to hear your voice somehow even after seemingly you've gone? Wouldn't you ask for that? 
If you could have anything, Mom, wouldn't you wish that for your child that in their sleep they could hear your voice singing to them when they were little? Well, that's not a fallacy because some of you are going to start hearing that. It is the age of the remembrance of the Star Mother. More than just an esoteric, fanciful word from those metaphysical people who some feel have gone off the deep end. What if this were more real than you think? Time will show you. There'll be a time when you will again meet a Pleiadian. And it won't be a star mother. It'll be the current set who comes to greet you. The one that says, take a look. Do you recognize anything? They'll say, and look, and say, we have 23 sets of chromosomes as well as you. Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> and that will occur at a time when it's correct for humanity with a higher consciousness. A humanity that will not weaponize every physics discovery. Imagine that. <laughs> Do you think that'll ever happen? And the answer is, oh yes. You see, it happened on their planet as well. We've told you, they even experienced full genocide by them with them. You think you have a sordid history on this planet of what you've done? Theirs is worse. And yet they pulled themselves out just like you have. Turned themselves around. That's what love does. That's what a higher consciousness is like. It starts to cure itself. You don't have to have angels come down and train you when you are part angel. If you get the gist, you simply start shedding your skin of old energy, a metaphor. And underneath it is a remembrance of made in the image of the creator. That's who you are. Magnificent. Beautiful. And some of you are going to start hearing the mother. Nothing like it. You'll never forget it. It's there permanently for those who want to. You might even ask for it. Because it's there for anyone. Especially those who are cognizing this and saying, this is what I've been waiting for. Now I know what that sound is. Now I know what that, that thing behind the veil is that has always been reaching out to me. Now I'm going to walk through the mist and greet that which is part of me, my lineage, my star mother. That is what this particular message is about. That's what is happening on the planet to a lesser degree, but graduating to a higher and much more profound degree with time. Metaphysics itself will change from what it has been for hundreds of years to what it's becoming because of the remembrances of old souls like those who sit in front of me now or those who listen to a message like this one. My partner never thought I would ever be giving a message like this one. He had hoped secretly that I would never talk about ETs. But we're not talking about ETs, dear ones. We are talking about family. <laughs> And that is a lot different. A lot different. Take these things in, in any degree you wish. But don't throw them away, just because they sound odd. Do they ring to you in any way at all? Could it be possible that these things are the way of it? 
I am Cryon in love with humanity. And so it is.